Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is going to be a bonus vinyl review. I'm going to go over two albums, two of my currently favourite albums. Uh, one is Eminem's 2004 fifth studio album, Encore. And the other one, which we'll do last, is just Curtain Call, The Great Hits. But we'll start with Encore. Also, you, you probably can hear it. Uh, I've got my fan on in, in this video. I, I don't like the audio quality with the fan on. But it's so, it's really humid in the UK. Uh, hey Google, what's a humidity level? Hold on. The current humidity in Bristol is 90%. 90% humidity, which I think is a lot. Anyway, it's really hot, so <laughs> excuse the noise. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, Eminem's 2004 first studio album, Encore, following up the Eminem show. Now, the Eminem show was a big album it sold you know it made Eminem ultra famous that was his he had breakthrough albums before that obviously but uh, the Eminem show was his, was his biggest yet I believe so obviously following that up was a, not an easy task to do now unfortunately um, Encore in 2004 was the height of Eminem's drug use his drug abuse and he suffered seriously bad problems because of it and to be fit, you know, congrats to Eminem, congrats to you Eminem, uh, this year he's 11 years sober of all of that stuff, he's completely clean, so, you know, congrats to him, and this album is considered by many to be one of his worst albums, up there with Revival, it's considered to be one of his absolute worst, and what happened was, uh, I think it was a few weeks before the album was going to be released, it was leaked online, so Eminem had to rush it out because you know, if it's already out there, people aren't going to buy it if they can get it for free. Uh, so, so maybe, I, I can see why people don't like this album. I can see why someone would prefer the Eminem show, or Marshall Mathers LP, or some of his later stuff. Uh, so, I'm, gonna, I'm about to say something really controversial, but I swear to you, this has to be my favourite Eminem album. Easily my favourite Eminem album. Um... <laughs> It's just so, it doesn't take itself seriously. Some songs are serious, which we'll get into, but for the most part, it's really goofy and silly, and the beats follow along that path. It's really goofy, and I really like that. And it's got some of the best hooks he's ever done, I swear. Um, so yeah, and having it on vinyl, it's really great to hear on vinyl. I absolutely love this. This is just brilliant. Um, and I love the artwork as well. Of them, like huh, the show, and with his gun. No, I don't have a new gun. Um, and I like the uh, the label, sorry, as well. I realised the video quality is really bad. Since I moved, you know, away from using the laptop, which I've now sold, it's gone. Uh, it's gotten worse, and it really bugs me. So I wasn't going to upgrade the camera, but I think I might, or it might be even be the software I'm using. But anyway. Uh, so the album starts with Curtains Up, which is just your standard like start to the album. Then it goes into Evil Deeds, which I absolutely love. I think it's one of my favourite Eminem songs. Father, please forgive him for I know not what I do. <laughs> he talks about how uh, he was bullied in school. Where people said that Debbie, his mum, had a Satan's ball. Pardon me. And uh, he talks about how he never got the chance to meet his dad. And he's grown up to be just like his mum, as in taking drugs and just being, you know, not a very nice person. Uh, and it's a really great opening track. I love, love, love the hook on that one. Father, please forgive me for I know not what I do. And then it goes into Evil Deeds, which has a 50, no, sorry. <laughs> it goes into a Never Enough, featuring 50 Cent and Nate Dog, which absolutely amazing, amazing beat. Amazing hook. I think it's uh, Nate Dog who handles the hook, and abs absolutely brilliant. I'm actually, con I'm going to go and listen to more Nate Dog stuff. I think Nate Dog is indeed. I don't know much about this stuff, but I think Nate Dog is in D12, and I do need to go and listen to uh, some of the other members from D12. 
uh, especially Nate Dog, because that hook is brilliant. And then it goes into Yellow Brick Road, which has an amazing beat. And I love the, the hook. Come on now, let me take you down Yellow Brick. No, that's not it. But anyway, um, Yellow Brick Road. Yeah, Eminem talks about how he met Proof, who was also from Detroit, and how Proof didn't think he was going to be very good at the time. And how where Eminem grew up in Detroit, it's not a very nice area at all. It's actually quite dangerous. Um, obviously, being from the UK, I've never been to Detroit. I would love to visit, like Michigan and those sort of northern states one day. Or the Midwest, I think it is. But anyway, absolutely beautiful song. And then Side A ends with Like Toy Soldiers. One of the best M&M songs ever. I love the, the hook that he sampled from another song, which I actually don't know. I've never heard the, the sample before, so I don't know where it's from, but it's beautiful. And I love the lyrics about how M M and m has got a following, and he's got some really loyal people, and he doesn't want to get them hurt or murdered, and any sort of gang warfare, and things like that. And someone's been hurt, or someone was hurt, uh, subsequently, it's maybe it's Eminem's fault, or, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure, you know, the story behind the song, but someone got hurt and Eminem feels like it's his fault. And then Dr. Dre is telling Eminem, just stay back, stay out of it, and I'll deal with it. Uh, then Side B starts with Mosh. Now Mosh is like a, a sequel to the starting track of his previous album, The Eminem Show, uh, White America, where he continues a sort of anti-Bush, anti-war um, <coughs> rhetoric, is that the word? And it, the whole the song starts with these kids playing, and it ends with the kids saying, "Can you hear us?" I love the beat, amazing beat. Uh, 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 oh yeah, huh. amazing lyrics about uh, anti-war, anti-Bush. Uh, I don't talk about politics on this channel, but I am extremely anti-war. I think that uh, Bush and Tony Blair, especially I'm British, so. Tony Blair is a war criminal and should be locked up. Anyway, uh, no politics. Uh, <laughs> Mosh is amazing. And then Puke. Puke. When I first heard Puke, I was a bit turned away because I'm a bit squeamish and a bit, uh, you know, it starts with someone throwing up and blowing their nose and just um, horrible stomach throw up sounds. But the whole song is about how his ex wife, Kim, makes him sick. He just hates her so much that she. She just makes him so puke, you know, she's so repulsive and annoying that <laughs> she makes him puke. And um, uh, the hook is all about how he went and got a tattoo of Kim on his shoulder or somewhere on his body. And now his next girlfriend has to be called Kim because it, <laughs> I can't imagine doing that. You know, I've got five tattoos and although Wish You Were Here, I did get for someone who we did subsequently then break up. but. It has more than one meaning, and it's not a name. Um, getting your girlfriend or your whatever your partner's name on your body is a terrible idea. Even if you know the relationship is going to last, just don't do it. Absolutely. But it is an amazing song. And then my first single. Uh, it's my first single is probably the weakest part of the album. Uh, he just talks about how he fucked up. Uh, this was going to be a big hit single, but he fucked it up. Uh, it's not like one of my favourite songs on the album. And then Paul. Uh, a Paul skit is where Paul rings Eminem and tells them that Michael Jackson didn't like the uh, m music video for Just Lose It. And he's probably going to sue. And then he asks Eminem if he has a new gun, because he shouldn't have a gun. And then it goes into Rain Man. Now Rain Man absolutely amazing beat the beat for rain man is one of my favorite mm beats just be brilliant beat amazing and i love the lyrics to it as well absolutely fantastic then side c sorry everyone i had to cut that side c starts with big weenie where eminem just spits off about how someone's being really mean he called him a, a cocksucker so he's just <laughs> You're a big meanie, you're a big weenie. It's all right. it's not one of his best, but it's all right. And then M calls Paul, which I think it cracks me up every time I hear it. Uh, M and M talks about how, uh, it's in a weird sort of robot voice. Um, M and M talks about how 
you know, they once sat down and watched a thriller video together, or the Billie Jean video, sorry, and then he uh, lists a bunch of Eminem, not Eminem, Brie, he months, <laughs> I can't speak, he lists off of <laughs> Michael Jackson songs, and, and sort of like, do you think Michael Jackson want, want to be starting something, or, you know, I'll always love Michael Jackson, <laughs> and stuff like that. And then at the end, he says he's taking a shit, and then you can hear sort of the clip of the gun falling out. That <laughs> just cracks me up. And that goes into Just Lose It. Now, I think Just Lose It is one of the most famous Eminem songs. Just Lose It. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just, I'm not going to sing it, but it is a great song. I, I absolutely love it. I love how silly and just wacky it is. Um, then, Ass Like That, which has a really strange sort of uh, Indian style. Hindu beat, I swear, and uh, Eminem does a sort of Indian or Pakistani um, brain accent, that's the word, when he, with his rapping and the hook. I think it's, it is a good song. It's not one of his best, but it is great. Um, then we have Spend Some Time featuring Obi Trice, Stat Quo, and 50 Cent, which is a great song. Not one of my favourites, but it is a good song, and you should definitely check it out. Uh, then Side D starts with Mockingbird. Mockingbird is easily one of the greatest songs of all time. Um, Eminem writes this about his daughter Hayley and how he's going to buy her a Mockingbird and buy her the world. How he wants Hayley to grow up in a world, in a better world than he had to grow up in. How he's going to be the father that Eminem never had. Sorry everyone, I had to cut, but yeah. <laughs> just absolutely beautiful song. He talks about how he wants Haley to have a life that he could never have as a kid. And it's so beautiful. The beat is amazing. The production across this whole album is amazing. But especially on this song, it's really good. And then Crazy in Love is a good song. Uh, one Shot, One Shot, Two Shot, Everybody Fun Shot is a really great song featuring D12. And then um, the final thought is a skip, which is great. An encore featuring 50 Cent. And Dr. Dre is an amazing song. And then the, the way the album ends, I think, is just brilliant. Uh, Eminem comes on stage and then um, he says, uh, Oh, I forgot, I'm taking you all with me, and starts gunning down people. And it's just the screams of the people and the gunshots. It's just so such a funny and great way to end your album. And then he kills himself at the end of the album, because why the fuck not? But yeah, this really is my favourite Eminem album at the moment. Just absolutely brilliant. Um, and I love the artwork to it. Now I'm going to quickly go over this one, Eminem the Hits, which came out in 2005, or Curtain Call. Now it's just a hits album, but I mean, it is amazing. So the intro is great, where he parodies a sort of Buddy Holly 50s sort of vibe. There's girl, you're my world, you're my girl. Uh, this one's for the ladies, and then it goes into fact. Oh, 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 God, yeah, I'm gonna find King Kenny, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shove a gerbil in your ass for a you. It's just, in <laughs> fact, is one of the strangest songs you will ever listen to. If you've never heard Fack by Eminem, like, go and listen to it. And I'm saying Fack, YouTube, it's Fack, not the other word, Fack. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, the weird thing is, as wacky and weird as the lyrics are, where he talks about uh, having sex and trying and coming and talks about shoving a gerbil up his ass. Um, the beat is on point and his flow through the song is amazing. Like, he kills it with the flow and the beat and the production. But the lyrics are a bit... Um, we have the Why I Am, amazing. My name is what? My name is who? My name is Chicka Chicka Slim Shady. A great song. Stan, amazing. Lose Yourself. Shake that, get on the floor, shake that, the the <laughs> Shake that, featuring Nate Dog is amazing. Sing for the moment, uh, my favourite Eminem song. Without me, like Toy Soldiers, The Rocks from Shady, Mockingbird, Guilty Conscience, featuring Dr. Dre, Clean Out My Closet, amazing song again. Just Lose It, I, 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 um, When I'm Gone is the bonus track, which if you haven't heard it, it's a really beautiful song. And then this album ends with Stan again, but it's featuring Elton John. Uh, if you didn't know, Elton John and Eminem are really close friends. 
and they still talk to each other a lot, which is just a fun little music fact. But yeah, um, I love this era of Eminem. After a current call came out, the hits album, there was like a five year gap, and then in 2009, it came out with Relapse, which I also love. But Encore is really a, an amazing album. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Take care, everyone.